Well, looks kind of like they got me figured out for somebody else, doesn't it, huh? Hello, Jim. Hello. Wonder where that number has been. No gunplay, you darn fool. Why, that's Jim Rollins. You're crazy. Rollins been dead five years. That's Jim Rollins, or I'm a coyote. It can't be Jim. Hello, Jim. It's Jim Rollins, back from the grave. Yes, again, old timer. My name's not Jim Rollins, and I'm not back from any grave. Do you, do you mean to tell me you ain't Jim Rollins of the Diamond Arm what disappeared five years ago? Well, that's what I'm telling you. My name's Grant, Texas Grant. What's yours? Oh, well, the folks around here call me hefty. I don't know why. Maybe it's on account of my size. Well, I wouldn't think that'd have anything to do with it. Oh, that's what I thought, too. You're sure the spitting image of Rollins? That's kind of tough on Rollins. I hope he was the right sort, because I'd kind of hate to be going through the country mistaken for some ornery cuss. There wasn't a writer man ever lived, clean and square. It was a sorry day for this town when he was killed. Killed? Yeah. Thought you just told me he disappeared. He did, about five years back. Then later on, we got uh, proof that he'd been killed. Oh, so that accounts for the reception I got when I rode into town. You're darn lucky you didn't get a mighty different sort of reception. There's many a bad hombre in this town was glad when poor old Jim passed out. Must have been an interesting character. Tell me more about him. Well, you see, it was... I guess I've been a talking too much. Meaning that there's still some of Rawlins' enemies hanging around? Exactly that. You see, there's been some pretty bad cases of lead poisoning around here. Regular epidemic. You, uh, haven't been able to find a doctor that could cure the trouble? You can't cure dead men what's been shot in the back by unknown killers. The best thing a fella can do is to keep his mouth shut. Well, that's something that won't concern me, because I'm just passing through. Cattle buying trip? No, just kind of riding around. I sold my outfit down in Texas, and I thought I'd just sort of... Oh, you know, grass is always greener down the road. <laughs> yeah. By the way, how far do you call it to El Cajon? Oh, about a ride. 30 miles, I reckon. Well, I think I'll be drifting then. So long. So long. See. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Well, you don't look as though you need any money. Oh, this hasn't got anything to do with money. Well, what's on your mind? So long as you ain't staying, don't tell nobody you're Texas Grant, 
Let them think that... That I'm Jim Rawlins? That's the ticket, will you? Well, what if I met some of Rawlins' friends? Oh, they won't know you ain't Jim any more than I did. And it'll kind of throw a scare into them tough boys, thinking you're back, savvy? <laughs> well, I guess it couldn't hurt me none, because I'm just going right on through, but... If it'll help you any, I will. You're sure white. And I reckon if you'd stay, I could get to like you like I did Jim. <laughs> well, adios, hombre. Adios, amigo. Jim, come in soon. I'm sure glad you're back. I sure will. It's been good to see you again, too, Hefty. So long. So long. Come on, Jim. There's Jim Rollins. Good night. Jim Rollins ain't dead yet. just going to shoot me in the back. Now, you get your partner and both of you clear out. I'll give you that much of a chance. All right, Rollins. We ain't looking for no trouble. Well, if you are, just come back to town. I'll be looking for you. This joke is going about far enough. You sure handle them. I saw everything from the window. I suppose there are a couple of pet enemies of this fellow Rollins, eh? They sure are. But these people that are coming across here now look as though they might be his friends. What am I going to say to them? Say nothing. Tell me you're anxious to get back to your diamond R. Is that Rollins' outfit? Yeah. Where does it lay in town? Well, the trail goes to the northwest. And... Here comes Sheriff Lou Collins. You've got to talk to him for a minute anyway. How are you, Jim? You old Mustang, you. Hello, Sheriff. <laughs> I heard you was back, and when I seen them two skunks are getting out of town, I knew you was. Well, you ain't far wrong. <laughs> Where in time have you been, son? Huh. Well, that's a, that's a long story. Here comes Utah Becker. Becker, all right. He's gone plumb bad since you left, Jim. And you better watch out, because he's still out to get you. Out to get me, huh? Why, hello, Becker. So you're still cheating the hangman, eh? I didn't expect I'd find you still alive. Well, I'm alive, all right. I didn't get out of town when the going got too hot. Maybe it didn't get hot enough for you. Maybe. Are you still aiming to make it hot enough? That depends on you. Meaning what? Meaning that I'll be slinging lead in your direction if you ever aim to jump me out.
barking dog don't bite, Rollins. Especially when it's yellow. Cleanest knockout I ever seen. Older than a mackerel. Ain't you, Jim? You sure handle that like the old Jim did. Come on, Jim. Let's get a drink. I'm craving to talk to you. Well, not right now. I haven't been out the ranch yet. I'll see you later. I'm sure glad he's back. I suppose we ought to go in and explain this mess to those Diamond R people. Lady, Lady, I, I'm not Jim. My name is Texas Grant. I shouldn't have let you do that, but I, well, you sort of took me by surprise. Jim, what are you saying? Well, ma'am, what I'm trying to tell you is that I'm not Jim Rollins. Uh, my name is Grant, Texas Grant. It's just that I, well, I, I sort of look like Jim. you you're not my husband? No, ma'am. My goodness, Mr. Rollins. No wonder the sweet lamb fainted, seeing you rise from the dead. I knew all along you'd come back, Mr. Rollins. But I'm not Jim Rollins. You're not Jim Rollins? No. I guess you're telling the truth. Your face don't lie. Poor honey. Just when I thought all your worries were over, with a him back, the sure is the end. The end? Well, what do you mean by that? Oh, just what I say. No money. And that thieving you to Becker, a rustling all our cattle. I just wish I was a man. Utah Becker, eh? So that's it. And has she been trying to run this outfit all alone? Alone? Except for them no-account cowboys down in the bunkhouse. And they're in with Becker. I'll swear they are. Listen, lady. I'm going to be Jim Rollins for a while. 
I don't care who you are, honey, but I'm awful glad you're here. Now, you stay here and explain the situation to this little lady, and I'm going down to the bunkhouse and look those cowpunchers over. Everything's going to be all right. Who's running this outfit? I reckon I'm the foreman, stranger. If you're the foreman, how come you and your men are sitting here in the bunkhouse when you ought to be out on the rain? Just what business is that of yours? Happens to be a lot of my business. I'm the boss of this outfit. I'm Jim Rollins. Jim Rollins? Jim Rollins? Why, you're crazy. Jim Rollins kicked off five years back. Guess again. What's your name? Nick Lawler. Nick Lawler, eh? I understand we're losing considerable stock. That doesn't speak much for your ability, Lawler. Well, it's the best I can do with the crew I've got. What are you writing? I'm just writing the name of the man that says he can't stop cow thieves with the crew he's got. See, I have to kind of get acquainted with the people on my payroll. Oh. What's your name? Jake Farwell. Jake Farwell. Do you think these cow thieves can be stopped? Not a chance. Rustlers are too strong for us. And besides... All right, all right. What name do you go by? Webb Oliver. Webb Oliver, huh? Mm -hmm. What's your opinion of this situation? Well, Jake and Lawler said it all. Rollins, nothing I can add. Unless you get a bigger crew, you're always going to lose cattle. Utah Becker's crew, eh? Why? I don't know. What's your name? Steve Pickett. Steve Pickett. These rustlers got you Buffalo too? Nope, they ain't. They ain't nobody got me buffaloed. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Do you think these cow thieves can be stopped? Well, I never seen any yet that couldn't be stopped, if you went about it right. Well, if you think they can be stopped, how come the Diamond Hour is losing so much stock? Don't ask me. Ask Lawler. What are you trying to stop, now, Steve? Just a minute, Lawler. I'm talking to Steve. You'll get a chance to explain later. Steve, are you hinting that Lawler knows something about this business? I didn't say that. What I meant was that Lawler keeps me riding on the other side of the range. And I don't happen to be where the wrestling's done. Yes, that's all he's good for. Chasing strays, playing nursemaid to them. He hasn't even earned half his wages yet. You're a liar. Go ahead. Hey, wait a minute now, Lawler. Steve has no hand, no account. Who kept him on? Why, uh, why I did. Well, that settles it, Lawler. You're fired. For what? For keeping a man on the payroll that's no good. Savvy? Take it easy, Lawler. Steve, gather up the hardware. Well, I was quitting anyway. I'm sick and tired of taking orders from a fool woman. Now you better bridle that tongue, Lawler. Talk like that's a little dangerous. Yeah? 
And anyone can talk mighty brave with a six-shooter in his hands. Oh, that's the way you feel about it, eh? Well, Lola, just put your hands up, because one of us is going to take an awful beating. Yes! Hold on! Thanks, kid. I'll take my gun now. You don't have to hold a gun on these fellas. They're not going to do anything. Now, you fellas, roll your bedroll just about as fast as you can and pick up your friend and get out. Here's your hat, boss. Thanks. As soon as they've cut their saddle strings, see that they get off this ranch and keep them off. Okay. Well, boys, come on, let's get going. I think it's a good idea. Nobody would know the difference, and he sure looks like him. Yes, he does. I'd better come up and speak to you because I've just been talking to your ex-foreman. Ex-foreman? Hmm. You mean Lawler has quit? Oh, quit cold. Well, Mr. Oh, dear, I, I can't think of your name. Texas Grant. Well, Mr. Grant, Kate has told me about your ideas, but I can't let you take over my burden. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a little late for that, Mrs. Rollins. You see, I, I fired most of your crew. So I've just got the stick now. And I've just fixed the spare bedroom. Spare bedroom? Why? Oh, I, I'll sleep in the bunkhouse. Oh, don't be silly, Tex. We're both grown-up people. Besides, you've got to sleep in the house. If you don't, they'll suspect that you're not Jim. Well, there's something to that, too, but I thought I Kate maybe... is the grandest chaperone that ever was. I don't know what it is, but say the word, honey, and I'm it. <laughs> well, come on, supper's almost ready. Jim Rawlins. All right, Mrs. Rawlins. No. Helen. Very well. Helen. <laughs> I've been looking for you, Rawlins. But you couldn't have been looking very hard. Been in town every day. What's on your mind? You've been hinting around town that I'm responsible for the loss of some of your stock. And I want it stopped. All right. I'll stop. Hinting? 
I'm going to come right out flat and brand you as a cow thief. Hold it, Becker. Put up your gun, Steve. Well, do you want to finish your draw? Man to man, I'd do it. But I'd be a fool to draw against both you and your bodyguard. Steve, would you mind walking down the street a ways? Sure, I'd be glad to. Well, go ahead, Becker. Pull your gun. I'm waiting. What's the matter? Lost your nerve? I'm not a fool. At the first shot, your man had come a-running. But I'll get you, and I'll get you right. He sure lost his nerve. <laughs> Shooting in the open isn't Becker's game. I see the whole thing, Jim. And if he just throwed his iron on you, I'd have sure got him. Sure you would, <laughs> Lou. I know that. But he's out to get you. And if he does, he's going to be in the bag. Jim, I lay a bed last night thinking, there's you out there playing a lone hand. You ought to have some other cow punches besides Steve here that you can depend on. I aim to have before long. I just came to town today to send a telegram to some old friends of mine. Howdy, Mr. Rollins. How to do? I want to send a wire. Steve, listen to this. Jeff Bowen, Laredo, Texas. Round up several of my boys and get to Stampede, Arizona at once. Stop. When you arrive, ask for Jim Rollins. Signed, Texas Grant. Think that ought to do it? It sure should. You know, Steve, that telegram is going to bring the saltiest bunch of cowboys that ever came out of Texas. Well, we're going to need them. Did you get that off at once? makes 20 today. Yeah, but we're mighty close to the diamond now. Let's get out of here. That's a good idea. It's that darn kid. Well, the place looks pretty good. You certainly made a difference to the place, Tex. Well, you wait till my ten Texas cow punches get here. We'll make a real cow outfit out of this.
Why, look. What a thieves' pony. Who, boy? Somebody's got Steve. Where are you going? I'm going out to find that kid. Now, there's apt to be trouble, so you stay here. Steve's working for me, and I'm going along. All right, come on. I got him running the brand. I got Oliver. I'm heading for town. You better stay here and take care of him. All right. Are you going after Father? Yes, but I'll send the doctor back to you first. into a shooting scrape with young Steve Pickett. I knocked him off, all right, but he got Webb Oliver. Well, you were a darn fool to operate so close to the Diamond R. You sure were. You're using less sense every day. Oh, are you all right, Steve? out of the ranch right away. Why, sure. Take this and stay out of town until it blows over. Things are getting plenty hot right now. Okay, boss. Let me take a drink first, will you? Sure. Well, here's how. Boss, I just saw Rollins up the doctor's office. There must be something up. I'd better be leaving. All right, Jim, I'll be over as soon as I can get my things. Fine. Hands in the air. Unhook that gun belt. One hand will be enough. What are you aiming to do? I'm going to hold you for attempted murder and for cattle rustling. Now turn around. Keep your hands in the air. <whistles> Pal, come here. That's the boy. Now keep your hands in the air. You ain't got nothing on me, Rollins. <laughs> Haven't I? I think I've got plenty on you. Now get walking all the way to town.
Says he's all right. Well, that's fine. Lou, I've got an idea. About how many no account hombres are there in this town that have no visible means of support? Oh, about ten or a dozen. Why? What's on your mind? You know them all by name? I sure do. Most of them hang out over at Becker's place, doing his dirty work. Yeah, they would. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You make up a list of those fellas, and in a couple of weeks, here's what we'll do. That's right, Sheriff. Hello, Miss Jenny. How's your mother? That's good. Hello, Miss Bucking. How's the boys getting along? Fine. How are you, Jim? How's the lumbagger? Oh, fine. Good. Let's get going. Hello, folks. Good afternoon, Miss McGonagall. How do, Sheriff? You're looking well. Come on, tell us about it. Let's hear what it's all about. Uh, 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 Hello, Elmer. Howdy, Sheriff. I guess everybody's here. <laughs> yep, but I'll wait till three. Got about four minutes yet. Oh, we've right, right, got to do it. Come now. Oh, Come on, tell us about it. Let's hear that speech. I can't tell you how good it seems to have you longhorn Texans with me. Dang my pesky hide. It's good to be riding again with you, Tex. Well, we sure mighty white of you boys to come clear over here to help me out. Oh, we know there was something doing when we got your telegram. How are you boys? You all fixed? All right. Ready here? All here. Now, everybody knows what he's supposed to do. You bet. You bet you right do. All right, let's light out. your crime and law enforcement. Yeah. 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 It's two minutes for three o'clock, and when that's up, I'll talk to you. Gentlemen. 
Boys, get in, close that door, and don't let anyone out like hell. How's the shoulder, Steve? Great. It just creased me. This lecture ain't gonna keep you folks here none too long. Short and sweet's my motto. There's a certain lawless element sprung up in Stampede. And it's ruined in the name of our fair town. Ah, quit the wind jamming, Sheriff, and get to the point. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here, I'll do that, Randall. I got a list of names here, and yours almost heads it as an undesirable. Every man on my list appears to have no visible means of support. But they all have money. Looks like crooked wages to me. In short, the people of Stampede are asking you all to leave town pronto. Supposing we don't want to leave, brother. Yeah. 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 You want and ain't got nothing to do with it. I'll read off these names and tell these men to get. And I've got the county behind me. You can't get away with that. Shut your trap, Lawler, or your name will be on this list. There ain't none of us going unless we feel like it, are we, fellas? No. Oh, no. oh, wait, wait, let him talk, let him talk. We'll go over to Becker's place and drink to keep from choking with laughter at what he says. <laughs> oh, you're talking <laughs> French, let's hold it. Stand right where you are. Now, there won't be any drinking done any place until the sheriff finishes reading the names on that list. Sit down. Rollins, if Becker wasn't out of town. Now, nobody's going to get hurt. You just stand and be quiet. When your names are read off, I'm advising you to walk down that aisle and turn your guns over to the deputy. Go ahead, Sheriff, read off that list. You bet I will, Mr. Rollins. Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly, get moving. Pedro Basha. Art Randall. Chuck Macy. Harry Matthews. Sandy Decker. That's all of them, Jim. Now, folks, everyone except these 11 men whose names have been read out, they leave at any time. Hefty, open the doors and let them out. Sure glad my name was. Yeah, I'm going to stand, please, with us. 
Gentlemen, get away. Yeah. Well, what are you fellows aiming to do with us? We're going to send you out of town under escort of the sheriff and some riders. But you're going to walk. And when you get outside Stampede, keep on walking. It's only 20 miles to the next town. It ain't human. A 20 mile walk will... We'll give you a chance to realize that it won't be healthy to ever come back to Stampede. Get a moving, Sheriff. Come on, Ambrise, move out. Texas friend sure came in handy, Jim. I couldn't have done any better myself, Mr. Rollins. Well, thank you, ma'am. Good work, Jim. Well, don't thank me. Thank the sheriff. Well, it's a good thing for the towel anyway. Well, come on, let's go up to Hefty's and knock one off. That's a good you? idea. <laughs> What's going on here? We're just moving some of your happy family out of town for their health. I bet this is some of Mr. Rawlings' doings, huh? Well, don't worry, boys. I've got plenty on this, Mr. Rawlings, and I'll have you back in town plenty pronto when I spill what I know. Ah, get moving there, you hombres. Move along there. talk with you. Well, Becca, too bad you weren't here in time for our little party. Don't worry. I've been having a little fun of my own. If you've been having fun, it must have cost somebody something. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you're so mighty honest, how come you're parading around under a false name? What's that you said? You heard me, Mr. Texas Grant. Well, what if I am Texas Grant? About that Rawlins woman, that don't explain you. Say, hey, listen, you. Whatever your name is, you've imposed on this town long enough. And you've been doing a lot of talking when you had a gun to back up your play. Now I'm saying something. This town ain't big enough to hold the two of us. Well, then maybe you better be leaving, Becca. I ain't leaving. I'm a calling your bluff. Just how? I'll be waiting for you in my saloon at four o'clock. Alone. And if you're a man, you'll meet me there. Alone. I'll be there. I'll be awake. And come a-shooting.
Becker's a lot faster on the draw than you think he is, Jim. You better let me handle this fight. Oh, shut up. Steve's right. Let us handle this for you. He's tricky. He'll see you the moment you come in and you won't... Now I'm running this. Yes, but we want a hand in it, too. Well, you young fool, will you keep your mouth shut? You heard what he said about Helen. Now I'm heading for the Red Dog. And I don't want any company. Oh, Jim. Oh, Jim. Don't... Don't misunderstand us. Oh, I, I'm sorry, fellas. I guess I kind of went crazy in the head there for a minute. Oh, well, I'm... I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> go soak your head. We know how much you think of Helen. You had a right to explode if ever a man did. Sure. We wanted you to blow off a little steam before you met Becker. You'll be steadier now. Yes, I... I guess you're right. It's a minute to four. At four o'clock, there's going to be a shooting scrape in here. So you hombres clear out. Go on, get out. Not you. I'm not taking any chances. Quick, get behind that bar. And after the first shot, let him have it, no matter what happens. Go on. Well, if anything should happen that I'd... Well, I might be a little slow on the draw or something like that, why... Just see that Helen gets my horse and outfit, will you? She... Well, she kind of stuck on him, you know? And... And don't forget, she's been true as gold to this guy, Jim Rollins. Don't you think otherwise, boys. You've been on the level, too, Jim. Well, I guess I'll be going along now, or I'm going to be late for an appointment. Watch him in this mirror, and as soon as he hits that door, I'll turn and get him. Get ready. Doctor says you can get up tomorrow, and I'm so happy. You've been a good patient, but it's been a long fight. I'm glad you're going to be all right, Jim. You know, Helen, everything is so confused. Will you tell me, am I Jim Rollins at Texas Grant? You've been out of your head for days, dear, and you've talked continually. But we found out everything. In your fight in Stampede five years ago, Becker hit you on the head. And then his men threw you in a boxcar, and you disappeared. You went to Texas, Jeff tells us, and you settled down there. Lawler's shot seems to have lifted a cloud from your memory. Yes, I... I seem to remember now. All of your Texans are waiting outside to talk to you. Oh, it seems that everybody wants to take up all your time. But I'm just selfish enough to want you all to myself. <laughs> now, Helen, I can't tell you how good it is to be back home again. I've been away so long. Oh, Jim. <laughs> 